Excuse me. Hello and welcome. I've got hiccups. Press record. Jamie is messing about as usual and was late yesterday. But hey. this week, we're going to be talking about, excuse me, getting organised um, and the carnage that is being self-employed. And we're and also going to talk about pressing yourself. record. Press record. <laughs> Hiccups. Jamie is messing about. Oh, Someone's, oh, no, someone... Gary, carry on. Go carry on. on. We're still going, but we are pressing record right now. Yeah, <laughs> Welcome, viewers, to this week's edition, 24 hours late, of Electrician's Carnage. And now my seat's gone down. Are you done? Are we ready? Are we off? Mate, are you... Are you, you know we're live. Yeah, yeah, don't worry about it. The viewers love all this shit. No, they don't, mate. They really don't. Clouds. We've got to record it. But we're off. We're off. I'm logging into the chat. I've just put the number out. If you would like to contact the podcast tonight, you can contact us live on 07492 330 042. I will put that number in the chat now. While Sam does, the read for the number one place to get your shit from. It's been a right nightmare this evening, just getting even getting Jamie to do the podcast because he's <laughs> useless and unreliable. However, Thank you. Um, this week, the podcast is brought to you by electricianspod.shop, your number one place to get all things Verso. Um, yeah, we're doing some really good deals at the moment. So if you are in the marketplace for any socket switches, spurs, anything to do with fuse boards, hit us up. You can always get in contact with me directly and I will do you some really good deals. So let me know what you need. And I am going to give the shout out to Chevron Onu. They are the number one people for all your power quality monitoring, energy analysis and all that measurement of stuff that Sam doesn't understand. They support the podcast by letting me use free things, which I get to show off to you. They've sent a few bits and bobs and I've been totally happy with all of it. In fact, I think when the sponsorship comes to an end, I will still continue to love their stuff because it's pretty fucking good. I'm really happy with it. So, yeah, if you want to measure anything, test anything, log anything, they're the people to get in contact with. Give them a shout. Yeah, they are quite good with all that sort of stuff. I'm just, you know, I'm just not that smart to use I, them. I, I thought I was quite clever till I got the analyzer, but I'm getting the way around it. But um, I'm dead happy with the sponsorship, guys, yeah. And what I will definitely say is, when, like I say, when, when they're not sponsored anymore, I'll still use the gear because I really am dead happy with what they've got me for the analysing and stuff like that. So come on. Whilst, whilst we're at it. Oh, yeah. Last week or the week before, i done a shout out for the back box repair clip. This on screen, your back box repair clips. Now, they are absolutely fantastic and we're not sponsored by them, but they did send, send through four packs to give away. Haven't decided how we're going to give them away, but by the end of this podcast, we will have given away four packs of back box repair clips. You know, it's not the biggest nice. giveaway in the world, but they are really decent. It's nice that it's nice to come on here and give a genuine, like, big up to something because people enjoy using it or like using it or it's useful, and for them to send us something to give away. And we really appreciate that. That's what it's all about. This pod is looking after the spark is. So, cheers yes. for that. Um, so. This week, um, I'm so not with it today. I'm really not with it. It's been a really, really busy day. Like, my work is absolutely chocker this week, the which is lovely. You used to do this every Monday, though, didn't you? This was the Monday Club before I stopped, before yeah, two, yeah. six months ago. I used to do it every Monday. I don't know how you managed it after work on a Monday. No, do you know what? I don't... I, listen, I would do a podcast at three in the morning. I have done. And it's <laughs> absolutely... I have done when I'm doing the Fat Sam podcast. But... I just love podcasting. The other thing is, one of the things we wanted to talk about tonight is getting organised and the carnage that can quite quickly come from being self-employed. It is shall, mad. Shall we talk about this podcast first? That we've got some news for the viewer. Go on then. So, right. If you had noticed, it's Monday, not Sunday. Now, we both enjoy doing the lives on a Sunday. We really, really do. But at the minute, there's stuff going off mainly for me but for some as well for better for everyone and it's just not we can't always commit to it on a Sunday so what we decide today is there's going to be a podcast a week it's going to happen every week it'll be on video it'll be on YouTube it'll be on audio but we're not currently making a promise on when that will be we'll try and put it on we'll put it on Instagram before it happens so people know when to watch and we'll try and do Sundays yeah and we'll try to do Sundays but 
just the way things are going off, uh, which we're going to talk about this podcast, that's all what this one's about. Keep an eye out for us. Keep your ear to the ground. Keep your eyes on the Instagram and, the, and Twitter and whatnot or whatever, so Bebo or whatever it is. There'll be a podcast a week. There could be one on Friday and then one on Sunday. There could be one on Saturday and Sunday. There might not be one until the following Saturday and Sunday, but there'll be a podcast a week. That's our promise to you. We both enjoy doing it. We want to keep it up, but being tied to the 7.30 slot is, is becoming a bit of a problem for me just at the moment. And hopefully in the new year, we'll get settled back in to doing it on a Sunday night because we enjoy it. See, people don't realise it. it. It is only once a week, but it can get so brutal jamming it in every week at the same time because, you know, family life, working life, things creep up on you. It's, and before you know it, you're postponed for three or four days. It's It It looks like we just sit here for an hour, yeah? Which is effectively the bit you see. Beyond the scenes, we, I mean, I haven't spoke to you all this week, which is unusual, isn't it? You've been busy. I know yeah. you've been busy. We probably speak to you on the phone for two hours a week. There's graphics to make, keeping up for the news and all that. I was wearing a soda form last week. Didn't look for anything. That's why. That's why I was late last night. I didn't even realize. I didn't it was want to get there. into that with you because you took five days to do eight armors. We've we've talked about this, haven't we? Offline. Not live. You, you want to do it again, dear? You want to go for this? Yeah, again, yeah, dear? for sure. But anyway, we, we'll do that. We'll do that in a bit. Um, yeah, bear with us. Oh, oh, five oh, armors oh, in five days. You still digging that, aren't you? Bear with us. There'll be a pod every week. Keep sending the stuff in. Keep sending us a message on Instagram. Keep texting the phone. All that helps us put a show together that people enjoy and we get the feedback people enjoy the numbers are climbing up but we just can't commit to the regularity at the minute because my life is currently not regular and I do apologise for that but I'm a real sparky doing a podcast for real sparkies and Sam is also believe it or not a real sparky doing a podcast for real sparkies getting into it a little bit I actually feel more close that I actually feel more like a real sparky now I'm doing all my own stuff now it's fair to say you don't realise how much organizing and fannying about just to get your jobs booked in in the right area at the right time and all that sort of stuff so i've offloaded that my wife does it <laughs> my wife does everything other than do the jobs now because i literally couldn't you'll watch organized. out mate she, if she gets a red rider if she gets in the books of her she'll be doing that as well and then you'll be skinned brilliant she'll no, just brilliant. book herself she in for all your it. jobs <laughs> no i'll just sit at home watching tv all day i'm, I'm happy for that Swap however it. Um, like, so all of a sudden my business went from like a couple of jobs a week and now I'm, I'm getting at least four or five jobs a day currently. And it's just going like, I've got, you know, that next door app that I'm always using. Yeah. I've used the next door app actually, just, just as a, as looking at what's going on from my area. Is it got, got favorite business of my area? Award <laughs> do, this you, week. do you get a batch? <laughs> yeah, you do. I'll fit one. You get a badge and stickers for your, your van or, or whatever. So, so I've building, got that this week. It's building up then, is it? You're getting your name around. Because obviously you've moaned a bit, like everyone does. And, and But now you're getting more regular work. It's, you're getting return customers and stuff. It's way harder than you think it's going to be starting up your little business. Yeah. It really is. Because, you know, you've got to put in, pro, like what well, I certainly had to put in maybe six months of just like, picking up jobs where I can. Trade so I was water. working and then like when a job come in, just go and do it. Like if, even if it was half seven at night and someone wanted two lights putting up, I was like, yeah, I can do that now for you. So it's just, it's just took a long time to sort of get here. I do think it's the pre-Christmas rush. You know what it's like. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it'll probably be dead as a do- door now in uh, January. But there's, there's a few things I wanted to talk about actually. It's like, I mean, like, if you're getting going, from my perspective, just to check, yet, yeah, when you start, really, the only way to do it is either to sink your own money into a hole and wait for the work to come in and get out there, or whilst you're working for someone, you start and do it on the side until it becomes, until it takes over your normal job. That's, they're, they're two options, aren't there? If I, if I was a single man, just had my own ass to keep, yeah, I would have, I would have just gone, bosh, right, this is what I'm doing now, and just waited for jobs to come in, because, but when you've got, like, family and a mortgage and all the stuff that comes with it you've got to keep money coming in so, yeah there's no like there's no you can't have a dip in the money income can you it's got to carry on no well there ain't no money to dip in bruv so it's just a matter <laughs> of like making that making getting enough work so you can so this is my fifth week fully yeah. booked breaking even and when i say breaking even that's the money i set for each day yeah, that you, so you that earn what you, you earn what you want to earn to just keep things ticking over. Yes, that's my break-even point. 
<laughs> anything oh. more than that, that's then going to be profit. But I'm, I'm diddling around now. Um, I'm, I'm not finished. I've put my notes in the work. Got till I think I went confirmed with that. Yeah, but it'll be either then in January or February. Yeah. I had a week off last week on a solar farm. I took a week off. I did some work. I do. I'm still doing a bit of work on the side. I'm looking forward to getting gone. I've got other exp- areas to explore. But what I've realised is that some of the stuff I want to do, I've got to sink some money into it. So I have to take a proper gamble now because at the minute the stuff we're doing just labour. But there's a few things I want to explore that need some money sinking into them. Um, I'm, <laughs> there we go. I'm going full Joseph Valentino. I'm going to do some electricians training. Not co- not courses, not business courses. I want to run. In the end, I'd like to run a course for people to come and do large steel wire armors experience and training. Because no there's one's really that, doing it. Just, whilst we're talking about steel wired armors. There we go. Let's just get this out the following way Jamie, uh, in the chat, if you've been following Jamie, let me know <laughs> last week how it took him five days to make off eight armors. 16 aluminium armors, 150s. Into a shipping container and Five days. rework all the switch gear and bus Five bars. Days. I'll tell you what, when it's out on YouTube, I'll put a, a vote on it if I took too long. <laughs> but I think we was grafting and it was dark and muddy, but I really enjoyed it. Amazingly, I was in a dark, muddy field all week, dragging in massive muddy armoured, and I fucking loved it. And that's when I knew I'd got to go back on my own. It it was it clicked. Yeah, it's funny. It's funny because when you're working for someone, you don't really have that sort of pressure to get the job done. It, like, what's the worst that can happen? You're going to get sacked. No one cares. Yeah. Like, there's literally no repercussion to you if you don't get the job done. You know, Whereas, the, you know the pressure you got when you're employed? That's that's pressure from your um, the people above you for the same reward you always get. Their problem, not yours, really. Yeah but, yeah, but you get the same reward, don't you? When you work for yourself, I like working a bit late. I like getting stuff done late night. I like running around a bit of pressure because I know the reward for it is all mine. Uh, yes, that's what I'm saying. I don't that's mind grafting for to. people. and I don't mind grafting people for the reward, but I see at the minute, if I go self-employed, do what I do, the rewards could be high for me. I might be on my arse in a couple of months begging for my job back, right? I'm not saying I'm not ruling that out, but I think at the minute for what I do, the rewards are there. And I'm going to do some work. I'm going to do this training stuff. I'm going to train for other people. And I'm just going to be doing a bit a di- bit more variety of stuff, to be honest, which I can afford to do at my age, which will be nice, yeah. I hope. It's like that that sort of... When any, anything goes wrong on a job, I'm at that stage now where I quite I quite relish it. Like, yeah. I love the... Do you know, oh, the pressure's on now, and you get to do a bit of work in, like... I don't know, it's just... That little bit of pressure almost drives you to be... To do well, I don't know. It's it's very strange. I'm trying to sort of get my head around it at the moment. But the pressure of working for yourself is also, I don't know, it's almost like a bit of a turbo boost for you. I'm not going to go back to the old, what I did before, where I've got like a, it's the same company, basically. If anyone companies ask me what I'm doing, feel, feel free, it's the same firm. So, but I'm not going back to the old business, which was control panel building, design, big workshop, employed staff, doing loads of contract, not doing no. that. I'm just going to do stuff that I can do on my own, Adult work, like, so ideally I do th- two weeks, three weeks, one week on a job, do whatever they want to do in the armaments and all that kind of thing. Then I'm going to do a bit of training, interjecting with that. Then I've got a bit of design and consultancy I'm going to do. Going to do. I'm just learning, um, I'm just getting myself into that mode, core, soft, electrical and um, with the help of a few people. Yeah, I want to get into that. that. And I'm basically, I'm going to carry on grafting because I can still graft. My knees are more right because smoking is needed for the knees. And uh, as I move into the next 10 years, I would have focused on doing the more technical stuff on the design and that, but I just need to go on my own. I, I, I go, I drive to work the other week and I thought about it a little bit and I just pulled over into a lay by and I just emailed my boss says, I'm jacking. That was it. That's how I operate. It pulled over into a lay by for some dogging. And well, then... yeah, there was, if there'd have been some, some, I can't say that word on here, like, you know, floating man love going off in that lay by. Maybe I'd have just not bothered, but because there was no one else there, I just text my notice in. So, yeah. It is what it is, but yeah, it's not like I thought about it. But I just like, and then last week, like I said, I really enjoyed it. I'm sure people get like a job when they really enjoy it, but like I say, I want the reward. And I think at the minute, there's rewards out there if you want to graft. But I've got a note against my firm. But when you work for someone, if you're grafting, you, you can. I'm not saying I'm doing this at work because I'm still working there, Christmas do next week, but you can carry all the weight and get paid the same as the people. And every spark who's been on a job where they're doing the graft. And these ten of us subbies doing fuck all. Everyone knows that feeling. Everyone's at it. And and when my you biggest takeaway, you don't get that. 
my biggest takeaway from the switch to doing my own thing, completely doing my own thing, rather than doing a private job here and there, is just how much more money you can make doing your your own private thing as well. How much more driven you are to do a better job. Like, because yeah, the last yeah. thing you want to do is do a job and then have to go back and fix it. So yeah. you want to buy the best stuff. You want to put it in nice and neat. You want to silicone all around where you need to silicone. You just don't want any problems down the line where it's your fault and you've got to go back and work for free. I so it ups your game and like the rewards for upping your game is money, more money. Because the I, I, job you do, the less returns you have to go to and the more money you're making. You I can't I believe... As well. I get better tools. Let me just, just grab something one sec. Sorry, what do you think? So I just can't believe exactly how much I was more on this, money I can make. I was on this big armage job last week, yeah, and then randomly, I, was, I knew I was going on this big armage job, and then randomly my little lad was ill. And I was downstairs at 2 o'clock in the morning on eBay, and I bought this. Check out that beast. Wow. That, that's for chomping cables. It would chomp a 50 mil cable in two, yeah? And I bought that. It cost me 300 quid off eBay, right? It fits with a big foot pump I got. That saved me 300 pounds worth of time on this job. And the guy I was working for was like, mate, I'm so glad you turned up with that. He saved us loads of time. Also, big shout out again. I've done this all week, but I'm going to do it again, yeah? If anyone don't follow him, Joint Tech on um, Joint Tech on Instagram, the cable guy, the SWA oh, cable yeah. guy. Mike has done some work with him. Using the exhaust cutter, right? And I thought, fuck it, I've seen him do it, I'm going to try one. Saved me hours on the job, did stuff I've never done before, stuff I couldn't have done. So shout out to them. What's the exhaust cutter? What, one of them windy things? I just tried to follow the guy before I went in here. And I moved a box and set a kind of WD forty off here, yeah? but I, there's one on my Instagram. I'll put it up. It's it's basically like a you know the cutting wheels on a plumber's wheel for cutting yeah, pipe. Yeah. It's a load of them on a chain. Oh, okay. Absolute fucking game changer, Armored. Do not buy a cheap one. Buy the one on Amazon that's about fifty quid. I bought one. I thought I'd take a punt on it. Absolutely fucking made my life hours easier last week. Well, with... do you know what I I've never used and I've just started using it is the armor slice the CK armor slice. I've, I've, I love them both and the and the C, the CK armor slice and there's another one in there, uh, a yellow one, a yellow plastic one. I just I... didn't realize how much better they are than using a um a, a junior. The amount of people I've said, oh, I fucking hate them, and I'm like, have you tried it until you learn the knack? Because it's not like a knack, so you have to learn a new knack if you don't. But when you're self-employed. You go and buy these things. You have better tools and better equipment and better setup so you can do the job faster and make more money. Unbelievable. When you work for someone, they just get to use a hacksaw. And, and my tools are raggedy. My, all my do up batteries are three years old. So just going back on my own and get myself set back up again, which is what I'm trying to achieve at the minute, which is why I weren't on last night and that is because all my shit's in turmoil. This garage just put a video on Instagram on it before I started. There's shit everywhere. And I've just got to get back on top of loads of stuff. But the good thing is, when I get back on top of my own shit for my own business, It'll benefit me mentally, yeah. As well you were as saying money wise, because you're saying about like just even cleaning your works van, like that's not really for you, is it? It no. kind of is because I, you know it makes your life easier on site, but yeah, really I don't truly, mind doing it, I don't mind grafting. Don't get me wrong, I'm not, I'm not considered a lazy word, but what I'm saying is a lot of things when you're self employed that you do for the business benefit you as a person, so like. Having a nice office, having really nice tools, having I mean, buy like go out and buy a set of shelves for your house when you, when you work for someone. You bought a set of shelves for your house, you paid for out your PAY money. You go and do that when you've got your own business, they get paid for by your company. And I miss all that. Like one year, me and my missus went to York in a five star hotel for three days to have the board meeting, and it all went through the company. Uh -huh. That's legit as well. Yeah. So the firm I work for have been great. I've really enjoyed met loads of good people. I've learned loads of new tricks, but I just when you've been self employed. You, you, it's like you a cage, like when a cage you first animal. Do you remember when you first got this job and you was like, that's it, the best thing ever. I've Wait, gone PAYE. This is the best thing ever. I'm never going I, back. I think, I think that was you. I don't think I ever said that, but I, they, they were good. They still continue to be good now. I, was, I shared a job they've got going on LinkedIn. Why are you I'm, lying? I'm not. That was you. Let's go back through the podcast. Look, I said it was a good job, but I didn't say I'd, I'd never go back. If I'd said that, I would have closed down with them to company, wouldn't I, which I didn't. But today on LinkedIn, I shared a job they've got going. Yeah, I, I won't do that today. if I thought I won't do that before there's a bunch of dicks. But I, I said to my HR guy the other day, um, I said, "It's not you, it's me." <laughs> you know what I mean? One of them. But I just need to do it now. Once you get that little thing in your head, and if anyone's young and thinking about going on their own, and I see people say they're going on their own Instagram stuff, and I say, "Just go for it," because at the end of the day, you go back yeah. and get another job if you want. Yeah, just go for it. Um, 
the I think the hardest thing for me was getting my name out there, and that hustle was really hard. The second hardest thing is um, buying a truck. Like I just can't. I just I'm just having no luck with that at the moment. The the uh, the quest for tools and equipment when you have your own business never ends. It's always it's a fluid thing. Don't try and complete it, mate, with tools because you never will. Well, You're no, always buying you... random shit. Do you know what though? It's nice though. You go into you go into the wholesaler and you're like, oh, I need this. Like buying hole saws and buying drill bits and stuff like that. You're not really bothered about anymore because it kind of gets swallowed up in the job. Do you know what I mean? It's like all these little bits and pieces where before, when you're work, when you're doing like subbing and it's like tools and labour, you're just like screwing about buying a hole saw and stuff like that. I don't. I, now, I, I don't you know what I don't work. Care. I drill a hole with a drill. You know, I want to work for myself. I've I've got a little Dewalt box with a drill, all the drills in, and in there, there's you no know, treflex. I always dip a little bit of treflex on the end of a drill, and the drill lasts ten times longer. That's the kind of pride, a little bit more pride of when you work for yourself. Like you buy it, aren't you? Look after stuff more. No. And I'm looking forward to get myself settled down. I've got to go rent an office now because I can't keep running my business, this podcast, and other stuff out out this garage of a desk. So that's the next thing I'm gonna list. But I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be good. And I'm going to be advertising on here for fucking work because I'm a greedy man. I've got full Joseph Valentine with this podcast now. I want some so work I, out of you mothers. All right. I think I've got something that you're not going to like. I am currently looking at getting a um, bit of software. So like a Tradify, Payaka, something like that. Just because what they do... So at the moment, using um, my calendar on Gmail. Yeah. Which is great. It works absolutely fine. But the integration that you can get from these other platforms, which I know you hate. No, no, it's, I'll t- I'll, you go and I'll, t- I'll, I'll give my bit of The minute. integration is brilliant. So once the customer's set up, they're set up forever. And all of the um, invoicing, the um, certificates, yep. every single thing is automated and logged under that, that address. So when it comes to when it comes to sending an invoice, it's a one-click it's a yeah, one I get that, but I know Stuff someone... Like that. just saves so much time. I know someone who used one of these ones. It was either Trade Fire Pack, yeah, and all their data is stuck in it. They still have to pay the subscription to get to it now, and then they don't use it. What I would say is... My yeah, but pre- you, can, you can store your data. Yeah, your they're going to let you get your hands on all that on there. What I'd say is, right, is every big business in the world uses Microsoft, and that's OneDrive and no, this I don't Office think, suite, I don't yeah? think you're right. They do have bespoke software. A lot of companies yeah. have some sort of bespoke right. software to run their run business. Run your business. And this is just my opinion, yeah. I'm not like if, if if one of these software things works for you, then great, yeah. If you own a stay the same size, you're a one-man band, great, yeah. I just have an Excel sheet that does it all for me that I wrote, and I learned how to use Excel from that, which I then use for loads of other things like cable schedules and Gantt charts and everything, yeah. I keep it all in OneDrive, which is a cloud-based system I can access anywhere in the world. If I needed a bigger accounts package... I'd buy Sage. My missus is a management accountant, yeah? She sits there all day grinding Excel spreadsheets because that's what big accountants do. And they integrate with Sage. The trading fire parker stuff, it's just a lazy man's option. If you don't want to learn anything new, you just want to spark, use it, fine. So if you know you run a that database I love a spreadsheet. You know I love a spreadsheet. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And I love so Excel I. and stuff. But I just think a package that is designed to be useful and designed with a a job in electrician's life designed around that, it will have tips, tricks and hacks that right. make things so much uh, easier. Let me be a bit more let me be a bit more ravaging uh, savage yeah. Right. I've seen Payaka's office on fucking um Instagram, right? It looks like some right flash cunts place. Oh I said the C word, sorry. Sorry. It looks dead flash, right? Then I see every influence in the world banging it out, right? Good thing to sell myself. If they go bankrupt tomorrow, what's happening to all your data? If they go bust because they're an investor I've told you this 400 times, right? It's not on your computer. The the You can just just pull it off onto your computer. You can do All your test sheets and everything. I don't don't think you can. If I'm wrong, pay uh, pay Acker or Trefi, tell me, but... You're 100% wrong. I don't want this conversation. I don't want all my shit on someone else's computer. I've got one file. It's a Windows-based file software. You create a file, put all your customer shit in it. I just don't know what the problem is. I think some people are lazy. I think it's an easy option. Lazy or easy being two different things, yeah. For me personally, I want all that data where I get my hands on it. It's in the cloud as well, so it's safe. And I want to jiggle my customer's data around 
on my computer. I go, you know, if I go to a job, like I need a grain dryer, then I fit in a sun dryer. I pulled all the information for that out there file and sort of rejigged it off that job. And I just like having it all close to me. I know we're all going cloud and that, but I just like to use the software everyone uses. I've not used. I So the, what we're doing at the moment is working very well. So... As yeah. we, like so we're just using the calendar so we share a calendar a man so if i get a call on to the work phone i i send forward the details to amanda she calls them up books it in right she yeah. does all the booking she does all the payments all that sort of stuff she's basically my tradify now someone put that in the in the comments earlier i did think yeah, yeah. sam's wife is tradify now so she does all that for me at the moment um and i wonder right and I wonder if these these platforms actually have this because one thing she does better than like is it such a time saver. She will book people in at certain times and certain days based on where I'm going to be that day. So she like, and I don't know if there's a if there's a software if there's that's an option in a software package. I'll just say one thing, uh, Dan DMH put in yeah, and I know because I spoke to him about it a bit this year. He's put, and this is a this is a bit of a secret to be fair. Sage Accounting does everything those bits of software do, but it's an actual bit of software in the computer. And if you start off little and you start off with Sage, they offer, a, I sound like I'm advertising Sage now, use my discount code. If you start off with a little subscription to Save, it can grow with you. Whereas the trade fire pay act out things, at a certain point, you can't use them anymore. So that's just something to bear in mind. That's a good point he's made there that I just want to put in. I don't know. I just want, I just want absolute seamless ease of or, or, of use all right i don't want to be outlook, i don't want mate. to outlook. deal with maintenance of updating exactly and pay, shit. Pay, no, uh, pay microsoft 80 pound a year for office suite get outlook which has got a really good calendar in it you get an app on any device it syncs across all devices and when you open a file in excel you can open it on your phone on your computer it auto syncs them up that's doing it all, all right you've got to write the background invoice stuff yourself I but, just, I'm not interested. I've got two. I've, I remember, I've got the shop. I've got this. I've got the podcast. I've got a million things going on. I'm not interested. saying I'm not saying I'm right, and everyone should do what I say. Yeah, but what I I'm do saying think is, you're wrong. I do I, think you're. I definitely think I'm wrong, wrong in certain situations. But anyone that's if you want to be Sam the Sparky and his wife runs a business, and you do stuff to run your local area for the rest of your life, which I think you do. You're yeah. fine doing what you're doing. Go and get traded for. Yeah. If you have want to, if you're thinking about scaling your business up, I don't think those bits of software personally no. grow with you. I know that Will's Electrical uses it, Tradify, and yeah, loves it. Yeah, and he's got a few people working for him. I know that um, my uh, one of my bosses before Chris, he's got 10, 15 people working for him, and he uses Tradify. I just, I just don't see the need to pay someone sixty pound a month, which I think is the going rate for it. Sixty pound a month? Well, I, I don't know. Don't quote this. I don't find out, but I think everything I need to do. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm a bit of a tight fucker, and I like keeping my data. I can do, I, I know a bit about programming software. I can do all that shit in Excel. And when I want to adjust a spreadsheet to do what I want to do, I just adjust it. So I have like every every file I have ever, Excel spreadsheet. The first one's the invoice. The second one's the file copy invoice. The third one's an itemized list of materials. And the fourth one's a timesheet. And every job has a spreadsheet and all the data I get out of that. It's easy fucking peasy. I've just, a, lot of people, a lot of people are saying zero is a one. Zero? Isn't I think that's that page. I think it might be, you know, um, you know, you know, Power Tools made by Makita, Milwaukee and all that. You know, that company that makes them all, they make JCB Power Tools as well. And I know for a fact, do you know why they make them? Because they say, we'll sell Power Tools to every fucker, not just the top end, yeah? I think Zero is like Baby Sage, if that makes sense. Don't know. And there's another one called Simpro is expensive, but works well for big companies. Listen, I don't know. And I and like like Aaron says here, um, one how many influencers is and all that. How many influencers do you see selling Sage? I That'll did, do I, me. I That'll do, do me. That'll do I've me. Got thanks. Do it once. Um, listen, Tradify. Everyone's sick of hearing Tradify as well. I am as well. You go on any social media, someone's banging out of the subscription. Last tip. last week. Thursday and Friday, I, I sent something on Instagram, yeah. It was non-stop trading finding Unilight and ad, uh, Unilight adverse, yeah. And then yeah. to top it all off, on the burner phone I've got where I look at some accounts that I don't want to be associated with, yeah. What happened was the Unilight gaffer popped up advertising trading It was like hell on earth. <laughs> <laughs> Alex from Unilight 
do an advert for Trader Fire. I was like, this this is just for this Trolley, is basically an advert for Trader Fire now. Well, not really, because we we're not. Well, we're we're just talking about it. We're not being negative about it. We're but I'm gonna I'm gonna story. hit Payaka first because I've got a bit of a history with them. So I'm gonna have a look at their software and stuff. I am gonna explore getting into it just because if it's easy, why not use it? If it saves you time, money, when and a lot go, less thinking about. You know where you know them chopping machines that chop up veg and you and you dice it dices it slices yeah, yeah. it does all that shit. Yeah, go to any professional kitchen. And a professional chef only has one thing, a good set of knives. And that is, a, that is something someone told me years ago. It stuck me forever. A good chef has a set of knives. He doesn't have any gimmicks. And I think that's why I like auto. I use AutoCAD. I'm using Electrical on m I used to use um, Amtech, which I fucking think is wank. And then I use Microsoft. And I use a PC. And I use... You know what your biggest problem with it is? What? The fact that you've never used it, so you really don't know. Well, uh, someone said and that this about. This is I am... why I will be correct when I use it and I give my opinion. Once I've used it and I've done both sides, oh my! My answer will be the correct one. Oh, don't get me wrong. If you've got a set of knives, which I've got, and I chop things up, if I buy a chopping machine, it will be quicker and easier to use. But then afterwards, I've got to clean it and fuck around with it and put it away. And I'd rather, even though it's easier, I'd rather use a good set of knives like a chef. That's just. That's my bag. I don't like gimmicks. I don't like things that are whole, over advertised. What if it's a really good tool that has been designed for exactly what we need it for? Well, if it's that fucking good, why do they have to get fucking 5,000 influencers to pump the fucking thing and have an office that looks like it's a fucking... Well, you could say that about any famous brand. Like, any famous brand advertises. Some advertise more than others, I don't know. Some advertise in certain places. Look if at Nike. Nike, tw- Nike 12... sponsor every major athlete in the world. They don't need to. They're, like, they're, everyone buys night shoes. You know, if it was fucking seasoned Instagram people who know I've got businesses, which it, some of it is, yeah. But when I see a fucking 18 year old apprentice flogging it, that I know they've been paid to say it, I start thinking, well, what are you you're advertising to? You know what I mean? I'm not going to get back on it. That's my opinion. But I'm not saying it's not easy. I'm not saying it's not useful. But I like tradition. I don't drink Monster and vape. I smoke cigarettes and drink coffee. Bosh. That's so dumb. I can't um, believe it. No, it's, it's, because as you know... We'll see, we'll, we'll see how... though. We're, we're not going to say it's new, not talk about it. When you get it, we'll discuss yeah. it. I'm not signed do. up to a free trial. Fuck that. But um, I'll be quite happily here. If anyone ever wants an Excel advice, I hope you are. I don't mind doing it. Actual the, electrical content on Excel. The, 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 the hardest thing at the moment is invoicing and stuff. Like, I fucking hate doing invoices. And why, why are people asking for an invoice for like 100 quid's worth of work? I'll Fuck tell off. you, I, I'll tell you actually, you know what? I'll keep you that one, yeah. I was working with a guy on the solar farm last week called Phil, and he's got quite a big domestic company, and I think he uses Sage, and he has to do like five, six invoices a day. In my game, I'm lucky if I do one a week, because I do big jobs and just it's a lump. So, yeah, yeah all right, I'll give you that one. That is probably one of the benefits of stuff like that, is because if you're doing five got, jobs a day... I think it's got like good stuff, like you just press on on the customer and you get directions, you know, like that, that 10 seconds it takes to type it into Google and all that. When you're in the, when you're in the van and you're driving around, you just press a button for the next one. I think, I think the, I've got to admit, you're right. There is a window for that. For, there is, for people there is like lots you. of little things that will add up to make your day a lot easier. Yeah. I think people need to bear in mind that you do, you, you work in one area of the trade, I work in a very different area of trade. And for me, like invoicing is, is in like a four a month thing, if that. Yeah. And f- but if you're doing five a day, yeah, right. But I know Sage does that. But if Trade Fives do that or Payaka, whichever one it is, or whatever they call this week. But yeah, I'll give you that one. That probably does help the five a day lads, the job in Spark. So yeah. Got to be fair to that. But, yeah, um, I don't know. There's Chris a lot of advertising. It's, it, it, it's just advertising at the minute. But then again, Instagram at the minute is fucking full of adverts for people. Fucking it's Christmas stuff, isn't it? This is what happens. Coming up to Christmas, everywhere gets like the the rate you get during this period, like on YouTube. So the ads that get put out on YouTube, you get more money for at this time of year. A, a major player today. I looked on. I just go through some Instagram when I was in the van, just wait for something like a major social media player. It's like eight stories on their Instagram. Fucking snows. Nine stories, seven adverts. Like, fucking hell, lads. Put some fucking content out. No one's following anyone just for adverts. At least do it 50 50. Fucking have some respect for yourself. But honestly. here's the thing, right? A lot of people get into doing influencing 
and I was guilty of this at the beginning. And not that I'm an influencer, but like the whole having an online presence where you can flog your network. The, one of the massive reasons for getting into this is to have that leverage so you can make money for not doing a lot. Anyone it turns out it doesn't really work like that, but a lot of people think like some people are making very, very good money yeah, by yeah, doing yeah. a couple of minutes of adverts a, a week. The one percent of the one percent, yeah, yeah sure. are right. And I, I don't begrudge anyone making some money on Instagram, right? If you are, but you know what? At least if you haven't got if you're say, like I can only talk about electricity, yeah. If you've got an electrical business and you're doing some Instagram advertising, fucking fantastic, yeah. But at least 50 50, yeah. You know, without the electrical part of the business, you haven't got any advertising because you ain't got anything to See, sell. This is where you're right. This is where right. you're 100% right. You said this I, I, earlier. I mean, we've got to mention it because it it's been news this week, yeah. I think um, John at works, John, formerly of Artisan, has got it on his own. So if you are looking for an electrician in the Cambridge area, I think John has got his Instagram still. But he's been made redundant from um, Artisan. He put a video out that's now been deleted actually on Saturday saying he was making three people redundant, which I comment on saying I think it's a bit untoward making content out of people's redundancies. But. He does loads of advertising, but there seems to be very little in the mayor of content. And obviously, I've said this about eFix as well. Seems just be, there was very electrical content based. Now it seems to be an advertising thing. At least go 50 50 people. People want to learn, not just be sold shit. It's a funny thing, <laughs> right? Because with eFix, I think from what I've found, what, what I've been told is there's a lot that they do behind the scenes that they don't really talk about in terms of like the college connections and stuff like that. They do a lot of good work. So their content doesn't necessarily yeah, but that's, have that, to... Again, these advertisers in doctrine, isn't it? We said this last week, like, they put an advert on Instagram and said, no, if you want to be in our college collections, pay us and we'll show your product off. So let's not go on like they're not selling, getting kids hooked on, I don't know, Wilex or something, you know what I mean? But... I don't I'm know, not, man. I'm I've, not saying so bad. I think this, this, this like the way they're doing it is, is they're very honest about the way they do it, and I don't feel like they're doing it badly. Like it's not untoward. They're very honest. You watch us. Yeah, yeah. There's yeah. A cost, like we we produce our content, um, and we give it to you for free. There is a cost of watching it, and that's you've got to deal with the. I, I've got. With the I've adverts. got people. I've got people. I follow people on Instagram that, that advertise. Yeah, I don't tend to do on my following on my own Instagram. I've got a little secret one that I like to look at because then it's unbiased. Because effectively, they're doing journalism here, aren't they? So it's nice and real biased. And there's people on there that advertise you like, you don't begrudge them. Then they put some good stuff up and some in content. But a few of the big boys at the minute, it's like, there's no there. There's nothing electrical there. You're just like a, a Red Bull for Sparkies. Everything's advertising. You're like, come on, do people a favour of following you for a long time from when you probably was a little Sparky. And now you're just pumping out fucking adverts for torches or, or after reckon- 24-7. Like, the thing is, there's money to be made, man. I bet people are making good money. But yeah, listen, but like, what's going bought, on with... Just one thing, though. It boils back to the fact that without the content, the electrical content, you haven't got anyone to sell to. You can't just put advertising out, but maybe I am just... Maybe I'm sitting here every time being perfect. I don't know, but I just like to see a little bit of electrical stuff on the electrical people I follow. Yeah. The thing is, I get, I'm get. i very up and down with Instagram. You go on there, and if you're going through stories and stuff... You get 50 million adverts of completely non-related shit on there. It's very hard. To, like, I just struggle with Instagram. It's boring. I don't There's like it. There's some good it. ones. I'll, I'll name Bristol Sparker. Brute Instagram. For anyone that's learned to train, quality. Like, real-life bloke, doing real-life jobs. He's got a bit of advertising there as well. But it's a good It's a good shot. You know what I mean? I think he's got the balance right. Uh, who else? Can't think of the top of my head. I'll look at a follow, but he's one that springs out there. Joint Tech. Brilliant Instagram. Brute YouTube. Does a bit of sponsorship. Loads of content, loads of useful content. I mean, that exhaust got off there was purely by me watching him. You know what I mean? There's there's a few on there. There's quite a few going off. Down at DMA, we keep banging on about it, gets a mention every show. Water Spark is on there, and he. I'd have to look at a follow, but there's plenty of good people out there. They're just doing good stuff for people to look at without killing it on the advertising. But if talking you want to destroy about doing, yourself, talking about doing good stuff and like your your journey back into self employment. Um, and like this transitional period, you took a week off last week to do what, mate? I didn't do it out of the goods of my heart. You're making him sound like I went and built peace bridges in Bosnia, aren't you? But um, I, I had a week off to do some CPD in a solar farm. But I got paid for it, you know what I mean? I weren't like a charity, but I took that work to find a bit more out about it. And, and so 
just explain a little bit about your week and how it took you like five days to do. Are you still grinding this axe? Well, if you want to look, it's on my Instagram actually as a solo story, and it'll be on YouTube next week, so you can watch yourself and make your own decision. Sam has got Sam thinks he's faster than he is, and anyone that's worked with aluminium wire armored will know it's a bit of a bastard. Loads of intricacies with aluminium. Mate, it's glanding off armors. Like it doesn't that work should like take that. you about, I'd... I don't know, an hour, hour and a half. I'll tell you what then. Let's get three armors in a warehouse at apprentice one to one and we'll see who glands them off quicker. It's just glanding off armor. I'm not saying I'm the fastest, but what I'm saying is you spent five days putting away eight armors. Yeah, but they've been stored badly. I didn't just do that. There's a lot of there was a lot of buzz bar chamber and stuff. Anyway, like, anyone... you're, like you're an engineer. I like, said this in the media. Sort of yeah. If anyone wants to fucking spar with me as a sparker, I'll pre- I'm not saying I always win, but I'm pretty much willing to take anyone on. So if you want to get a few arms in a warehouse one day and make off in some enclosures, let's do it. Mate, it's not it's not like a big challenge though, is it? It's making off armoured. Yeah, but you're like, making... why did it take you five days? Because they was all twisted and they'd been left there for six months and we had to dig trenches and we had to fucking feed them under a cabin and pull them into a space as big as your mum's wardrobe. It was hard work. It was graft, but I enjoyed it. That's the main thing. Listen, how are we going to give away these these uh, back box repair clips? Um, why don't you tell us a story about whoever puts the funniest story about changing a back box, made up or otherwise, in the in the comments? Well, we've got four. So you've got four attempts to win the back box repair clips because I really love them. I um, mean, if anyone goes on. If anyone goes on Instagram and calls some rude words and tags him in it and me, I'll I'll send you a bag myself. <laughs> why? Why? Um, Just because you have to listen to aluminium it. Aluminium cable is artwork. Mm, I don't know, man. Aluminium cable. Oh man, I don't know if anyone remembers back in the day, but I was on the back on Instagram. Yeah, aluminium cable for a start is like it's just like a bar. And does anyone remember somewhere? But before. Multi before biometal lugs come along, which are an aluminium co- mix, you used to have to use normal lugs and put bronze gauze in them. Do you remember this? No, mate. Aluminium I've not done copper. much aluminium armoured. Aluminium and copper. Watch my Instagram or my YouTube. If you want to see this. Similar aluminium, metals. These similar metals. Well done, you. They don't like each other. So if you crimp it in a normal lug, they'll go manky. So you yeah. had to get bronze gauze and put that in with a goo, and it was fucking horrible. Ah, oh, I don't miss it. But the new lugs are pretty good. But aluminium is a. Is a technique of his own. I talked about cable twists on the Instagram. A lot of people who make up big armors don't understand our cable twists. They don't even know it twists. And it's a big thing. If you don't want a bird's nest, do you know what a bird's nest is, Sam? Yes, I do know what a bird's nest is, you idiot. So when you twist an armor the wrong way and it, the armorings blow out and blow the outer sheath, that's a bird's nest. You definitely don't want that when you've got cables that are 300 meters long because you fuck the whole thing. So there's a lot, there's all about that. But yeah, I'm still the fastest armored glander in the West. Mofo. But you're not like uh, you did. I mean, you're not gonna take a joint tech, you know what I mean? He's fast as he yeah, but fast. you did. Like, do you not think you took a long time fanning about trying to get it perfect? It weren't even perfect, it was in a trench, but we spent a so lot of time. What you're saying is you spent time fanning about to get it perfect and still didn't get it perfect. There was a lot on that Instagram story. I focused a lot on the armors when there's a lot of other work going from the background that we had to get right. Oh, and... yeah, all that work we didn't see. Well, because it was the video, because I tried to produce content, was about armors. There's a bit more in there, but it was mostly about the working with armors. That was the interesting bit. Did you learn much last week? Was it worth it? I refreshed a lot of things I already knew about Glandin. Just got to practice some old schools, which I really enjoyed, because I used to do that all in my 20s. And then I learned a lot about solar farms and how they work. And we was actually repairing that one, because believe it or not, the inverters that are the size of a shipping container... And now the size of a suitcase, and they've just they've done it in a different way. Repower it's called. So yeah, it was good. I learned a lot about like stuff and a lot about new stuff. I'd like to learn a lot more about the test of the solar large scale. That's it. That's interesting. I didn't expect that's um, quite complicated and quite interesting, and something where you, you could specialize in. That's the sort of niche you would specialize in. The the problem with solar farm general maintenance is it's done by a lot of cheap contractors, but this bit was particularly interesting and, and going around fixing. I'd like to do a lot more testing. I don't know how to test solar. I've read the book. I've not done any. I'll be tapping up a few people to do a bit of that at some point, and I'm interested in learning about that because I think that's a job. That, that's a trade, upcoming trade, isn't it? Going around someone's house. They've got drones with them. One thing I found was interesting. On the big solar farms, they don't go around testing the panels. They fly drones over because the broken panels get hot. So they fly a drone oh. over and look what, for the a heat. Flit? Yeah, they've got they've got a, a thermal imaging camera on the on the drone, a proper one. I don't know how much they cost, but they fly it over, look for the hot panels, log it, 
Then sort of goes and goes, oh, it's, it's these few here, the testament, find the broker, and swap it out. So it's quite interesting. Stuff like that, but you never really find out. That's read all good, the man. Read all the books you want, read about anything, but um, doing it's a different story, which is why you should be able to subscribe to my motors and starters course. Not really. Yeah. That. Yes, really, but not just yet. We're not ready yet. But um, same with that. I put stuff on. So that, that was what I was about earlier, doing the course and stuff. When I put motor stuff up, when I put big armor stuff up, people says, where can I learn that? I was like, there isn't anywhere. So I would have been able to dabble at that because I'd like to make money what out I will of say training. Is, what I will, <laughs> well, actually, what about this then? In your transition from PAY back to self-employed, I know you've got quite a few irons in the fire already, so your transition will be a little bit smoother because you've I'm older. got your... Because I'm older, yeah, simple as that. Well, and you've got your um, you've got your contract with uh, the football, so yeah, you do that. So yeah, that's I've a got, nice bit. I've got so, enough in the fire. I've got enough arms in the fire to try out new things, which is nice. It's a nice position to be in. So, what is your? What do you think is going to be the hardest thing about swapping over? Getting work. You do think still that's going to be the hardest thing? I could get next year fifty-two weeks of work. Yeah, or I could get none. But even if I get 52 weeks of work, I've got to fit it into 52 weeks, Anna. And that scheduling's always a nightmare. The, the stress of some point. But I'm not trying to get money. I'm trying to get time. So I'd like to go and do... My missus said this earlier. She's like, if you're away for a week or two weeks, I can handle it. But when you're getting in late ad hoc every night, so I'd like to go and do two weeks work and have a week off. And just buy, I'd like to buy time. I don't, I don't need to earn loads of money anymore. I ain't got a mortgage. I've done all right for myself previously, self employed. But I'd like to go and do a lump of work that I enjoy, then come back and enjoy having the time off, or maybe have more time for the summer. That's what I'm out to get. So, so scheduling, are you going, are you going, the worry. Are you going to go across the board, like whatever comes you'll do, or are you going to like be quite selective with what you do? I, I'm not doing domestic because I don't want to take food out of your mouth, but I am going to do the heavy industrial it. contract work. I want to start doing more design and consultation because I want to improve my skill in that area. So how would you even go about getting work for doing design and, and, and consultation? Well, I'll let you all to a secret, yeah? I do this podcast for the free and I do Instagram for free and I've, I've built a good following there. And, I, and like any businessman, you know, like um, Netflix and that, get the punters, then work out how you make the money after. That's the big thing in it with these startups. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I've done the Instagram. I've got some followers. I've got a little YouTube going. I do this podcast. And of course, I'm going to try and monetize it, but I want that to be in a good, honest way. So I'll come on in and I'll go, I do design a consultation. I want new work doing. And then I'll maybe get a bit off that or utilize the link. Same on LinkedIn. I've got quite a follow LinkedIn. And I'm going to utilize all those, like anyone should do, I'm going to utilize all those methods of social media, LinkedIn, YouTube and that to try and generate some work. But as I said earlier, I don't want to be a social media sparker that does electrical stuff. I want to be an electrical company that does a bit on social media. I don't want it to, I don't want the social media type way the one. I see the see social media is a way of getting more getting work and, and being more known. So yeah, who knows? But I will do what I do now, learn, keep using the skills I've got, but I'd like to get to the design and to do that, I need to do it. You can't do it from a book, you've got to do it, haven't you? So So if someone comes along to you and goes, Oh, Jamie, I'm in Nottingham, I need my house rewired. Are you gonna just turn it down? No, you won't. It's not I'm not doing anything like that. That won't happen. I'm not self for <laughs> Absolutely it. Absolutely not. You've got to remember, yeah. You can do a lot of stuff and I've got a lot of Detroit tools, but I'm not gonna take this there's a thousand domestic electricians not gonna do it quicker than me and better than me. It's not my bag. And I know you need to know your limitations, don't you? No matter what you're doing. See, I, I'm very much of the mindset. I'm taking what whatever comes in. I'm taking. Yeah, but if someone rang you and says, um, "Will you rewire out now an operating theatre for me?" You'd say no, wouldn't you? Because you don't have that skill. Well, you do fucking actually. That's annoying. Yeah. But you know what I mean? You don't. There's a lot of specialist requirements there that you don't know about. I still ring a couple of electrical engineers I work. And go, you know what? I'm doing this job. I'm not quite sure. So yeah, but like I, st I, I, I want to move out of my box, but I'm staying in it mostly. But I'm I'm. I'm putting my fingers out there a little bit, if you know what I mean. Yeah, I know what you mean. It's just, I'm taking it and if anything that comes in at the moment, and I really enjoy the little jobs, like from, I don't know, 200 to 600 pound, those sort of jobs. They're the ones I like. They're about a day's you know work. If you, you know, if you're domestic spark, you're domestic all day long, yeah? You probably see it as a bit of a treat to get a shop, wouldn't you? Or a, like a warehouse, you know, just a little bit of a thing. Move, yeah. spreading your wings a little bit, and I want to yeah. do that. That makes so you wouldn't turn down like a little commercial property, would you? Little gym or something. 
Oh, I'd love it. I'd be love a bit it. different. And that's what I think. I think everyone should be spreading the wings and moving up slightly. You start, everyone starts off doing domestic. Yeah, no one starts anywhere else, really. My, my ultimate move thing, up. the ultimate thing I'd like to do is bespoke garages slash workshops slash like taking someone's garage and turning it into a man cave. Yeah, or, yeah, yeah. Or workshop or a pristine um, place to put their, their pride in joy motorbike or car and stuff like that. Yeah, all, yeah. All, that is what I'd love to do. I was thinking about it the other week and I was, I was actually doing a couple of garages the other week and I was like, I really love this sort of thing because I started getting all ideas of how I'd like the benches all laid out with the specific tools they want on the benches and all that. I I do the whole package, stuff. everything. I did a little workshop for a guy like that one. So he was very specific. It all had to be white. He had all these, you know, like tool drawers that you get yeah. in garages, all white. Yeah. All white worktops, all white walls. I was like, what the fuck is he doing here? Like yeah, a... I would love that. I would no, love that. And I'd love to go and spec it all and then find all the all the different stuff. He covered and... it. It's all the same colour white. And it was all the, it was specialist light. There's three different lamps above. One was like a white light. One was a cream light. One was a special painted awesome. light. Do you know what he did? Awesome. Painted glass eyes. So oh, you wow. get a glass eye in a size that was made by a, a potter. And they get a picture of someone's eye that had lost their eye, and he'd paint their other eye to match. I thought it was a bit of a niche job. So yeah, but still, good, about what oh, that's, a good, that's mad. But yeah, I'm sort of starting to think how I'd like to specialise. I really, I, I never do anything normal. So I, like, I don't even know if there's a, a market for that. But I think if I could choose where I go over the next 12 months, that would be ideal. As I said though earlier, you know, like says everyone starts off. You you work for someone, you work on the side till you've got enough work to go and do that job. Yeah, you could carry on sparking, set that up on the sides of the business, and carry on sparking till you get enough work just to do that job, couldn't you? That's how it works, isn't it? So that that's my ultimate plan because obviously there's a lot that goes into something like that, and I think it would be really really fun, and I think it'd be I think there's a few quid to be made in it. Let's have a look at the, some of the uh, the old... Sergio yeah. says, I've got the 2396. I think that's a design course in it, which when I got it, it was a 2400. That's our old down. But tell me what that course is in the comments. I don't know. But yeah, I think um, whatever you're doing, if you're happy doing whatever you do, carry on doing it. If you want to spread your wings, you've got to do what you do and spread your wings a little bit on you. So that's how everyone starts. And there's, there's plenty of work out there and there's plenty of niche work out there as well. We keep saying this over and over again. We're talking about isms this week on the podcast. <laughs> but yeah, I'm not... Um, I might be on my arse next year. I might be on here selling fucking tradify and business courses. Who knows? But I'm hoping I won't be. Well, this is it. It's like, at the moment, it's all going well and, I, and I'm I'm loving I'm loving it all. But it's only going to take like one or two weeks of no work and I'm going to be I'm going to be hanging myself again. And that's... the war- I mean, I'm a... I've got... The eyes, I've got the eyes of the party. I've got a few regular bits of work that are coming in. Like I've got the football, yeah. I've got um, some testing to do and some designs for the yeah. Not enough to fucking keep me fed like I'm used to at work now, though. I'm not going to be turned over what I was doing there. But I think I can crack it and have a better quality of life and get the money. But I might be, and I'll, I'll tell you, you know what I mean? I'm not going to hide about it. I'll be on there going, fucking, I'm skin. Like, uh, you'll notice because my camera will look wank because I've sold it. But, <laughs> work on, but I'll be honest about it. It's not the best time to go on my own. It's not. There's a lot of financial. Can't work it out at the minute. One minute everyone's busy, the next minute everyone's not. But it's, it's mad. Weird. It's weird it's out mad. there. And I think that I think that bubble's going to break soon. I just I just wonder. Like for me, like you say, the quality of life is ten times better because you know, like my wife is quite quite a stickler stick a stickler for being like book. If I'm booked in for eleven o'clock. I best be there for eleven o'clock. She goes mad otherwise. Yeah. So I still have a boss almost, but I don't. Sometimes, some days I don't start till ten o'clock and I finish it after two. Although that's not the way you should run your. Own. You should be working twelve hours a day. But if you ain't got that twelve hours to work, what, what are you going to do? One thing I do is a lot. I negotiate as well. Like I've got a couple of good customers, and I'll say, uh, "They'll ring me. Oh, can you do this job?" It's like, "Yeah." What, what? You know, if they're a good customer, I go. What you got? What you got in it? And I'm like. I'm like and they know what I mean. I like what are you going for. Go. Oh, it's actually it's a bit of a fucking a bit of a fuck up. We just need it fixed. I go. All right, and I'll do your deal. I was about two seven five a day because it's near my ass. Oh, like, oh yeah, they appreciate that. But then another job to do for my charging four fifty a day. 
So yeah, I, for sure. I, I don't go hard. I, I'm always willing to go show people. I've got one guy who worked for, and I didn't want to drop for the other week. I went, oh, I'm not going to fucking send you the invoice, mate. Don't worry about it. Dead easy job on my way past. I was like, don't worry about it. You charge them. You get us the uh, you get the beers in next time we're out, yeah? Like, you got, you can't just be like, I know a few spots like, it's this a day or oh, fuck you. And I'm like, there's no way to do business at a time like now. No, like, no, it doesn't people. really work like that either. It's like fusible changes and stuff like that. You just, I just be as fair as I can without selling myself short. That's what I'm doing with everything. Just fair, transparent. My, my top wax like four fifty a day, yeah. But that incorporates a little bit of travel, a little bit of sundry. You know what I mean? Just the odds and sods of the the the, the daily grind. How much is yours a day? I, I go between like two fifty to four fifty. Depends what I'm doing. But I wouldn't charge someone four fifty to be sat upstairs in the office drawing a drawing because I'm gonna sat in my ass all day. I don't need the 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 squish money at the end that covers other stuff. I get I can vary. It depends what I'm doing very much. It depends very much what I I'm charge. Doing. I charge fifty pound an hour, or if I'm on a if I'm gonna be there all day in the same place all day instead of running about, I charge three twenty five. Yeah, I think that's a good rate, fair rate, isn't it? For what you're doing. Like, and that's a and that's an eight hour day. That's based well, on an eight hour. The eight hour rule day. is don't screw people. Don't screw. Well, this people. is it. And the longer they've been a customer for you for, not like BT and fucking all that shit. Who go? Oh, we have got a great new deal. Not if you're an existing customer. Existing customers always go. Yeah, all right. What you get, always say? What you got in for it? Is it? Is it? You know, if they get the impression it's a bit of a stinker, they've got to go. What you got in for it? I'll, I'll, I'll sort you out. I like, do them a favour every now and again. Don't be hard and fast because it don't it don't wash. See, and I've got him with a, a, a local um, landscaper as well, so he picks up quite a lot of like electrical work as well because obviously he's doing. Like it does landscaping, so people like to have lights in their garden and shit like that. And if that. you're doing that, you always go and have a look because if it's a fucking massive house, you're charging four fifty a day, and if it's a little house, you're a bit cheaper. Like <laughs> the one, one relied, what do you do for a job? Oh, what do you do for a job? I'm a teacher. Oh, well, that's forty pounds extra then. Oh, well, <laughs> it worked for the revenue. Well, that's a hundred pounds extra then. Like you know, <laughs> like play to your strengths, don't you? I don't know. For me, this this uh, like you say, the quality of life is so much better. Like, I, I, I'll, I'll level you like you at the minute, mate. I'm in a fucking mess. I'm in a mess, yeah. I've got an office in the corner of my little girl's bedroom that she moved into. I'm meant to move out. My garage at the minute is full of money tools from the solar farm. Everything I need to move needs something else to move. I'm just looking forward, really, because when I'm at work, I'm working for them. And when I get home at night, I'm about fucked. I'm looking forward. I've got three days off this week. I'm looking forward to getting all my shit sorted out because for me, that's that's what de stresses me is having all my shit. Like, someone brings me up tomorrow and goes, I've got an audio job. I come in here, grab the two audio boxes. All of a sudden, I go out and do it. Testing job, I come and grab the testing boxes, take them out and do it. And I can't wait to get that on top of that. Yeah, but, all those little things, they start really coming into their own. Um, right, so what was what was this giveaway? How are we doing this giveaway then? This is the worst giveaway of all time. We're really bad at giveaways. Do you know that? We are bad at everything. <laughs> we are bad. We're bad at being on time. We're bad at being regular. We're bad at producing. We're bad at putting the fucking podcast up. But as I keep saying, we are real sparkies doing a podcast. And if anyone on audio viewers watching on the video, you'll notice my chair's just dropped. So we're bad at that as well. But Paul it is coupled together. Paul Cook. Hey, there you go. Paul Cook's done a good one. Um, great shout. New traditional spaces. I put a good one in there last night. I don't want to give these someone that's like it. If you are domestic and you can use these and put it in there because. I'm not going to give one to the water spark. He's probably never seen a back box in his life. You know, <laughs> they're Tom just Bickerton. sitting in his garage. This is interesting. Tom Bickerton, who I know is, uh, he's got, he's, he's a good sparky. Um, Tom, are you working for 180 to 200 quid a day domestic, like self employed, or is that your subby rate? Can't compete against that at 350. Yeah. Because yeah, like he's saying he gets 180 quid a day. Um, is the going rate in Pompey? I can't compete against that at three fifty. The problem is in Pompey. It's, I, I've said this loads. I've said this every podcast I've been on. Yeah, it's geographical. Pompey is a. It's down Cornwall, so the rates less anyway. I don't think that's right, but that's just how it is. And it's not as opulent as some areas, so you can't get away with it, can you? I think that's just a simple fact of geography. People down Cornwall, know, anywhere past Exeter, you, you're getting less of a rate, and you probably pay more to live. Um, so I, I lost. I lost. I lost a job today, 
Um, it was what was it doing? And Tom said, um, "There's a company trying to keep you." I will discuss all that once I've left. Uh, I will give an honest opinion, but um, it's a Christmas do next week, and I don't want someone kicking off at me. So, so yeah, I mean, today I lost a job. They wanted a ring ring camera, um, like floodlight camera thing, put up. Yeah. Now I charge. I said I need to pop around and have a look where it's going up because I need to know where I'm taking the feed from and all that sort of stuff. Um, it put it could be anywhere from fifty to hundred quid, right? <laughs> so it. Sorry, just read with the comments. I was off. Sorry. Anyway, she turns around and goes, "Oh, someone's just quoted me thirty quid. I'll go with them." I'm like, "Go with them." Not even worth. You can't compete with a fucking. Uh, you can't I, compete I, with I would have the ump with myself so so badly if I drove all the way to Herne Bay to install a camera, uh, to install a floodlight slash camera, and like. For 30 quid. Why even, would you even do that? If you put it out the back of an upstairs socket, straight out the back, you are... I, I genuinely believe this, yeah? I'm not, I, I think I'm right, yeah? You are genuinely struggling to make it... You, you couldn't do it for your next-door neighbour for 30 quid in costs, yeah? No. Not happening, so... That handyman might be on your street fucking roughing in someone's fucking glazing or tarring or whatever, Yeah. But, drilling through their window frame or something. Yeah, if you fucking want, if yeah, drill through your window frame, put in a plug. Like there's at the end of the day, putting power to an outside light, you can put power to an outside light, and you can put power to an outside light, can't you? Like I say, drill through the fucking window frame with a bit of flex. Is it okay? It'll probably be okay. Yeah, but it might not be. You know what I mean? Like if someone, if you, if you I always say, in your, ever far in your loft, yeah, because uh, whatever. And the insurance man comes out, and you've got a plug going out your window frame. It'll be like you're not getting paid out, are you? And you know what I mean? So I always easy. say ele- electrics is easy, um, but it's just as easy to mess it up. Do you know what I mean? Well, yeah, like you know, generally like, the concept of putting a a light up is easy, but what 19... happens when it goes wrong, and you or you do it wrong? Everyone knows you. you know if you're a 1980s Ford Allegro. Back in the day, in the eighties, remember you used to have dads outside every Sunday doing tinkering with the cars. Yeah, you can't do it much now because of um, computers and cars and stuff. Yeah, but old school engines can be tinkered with by tinkerers. That don't mean you can't leave a fucking spanner in the piston, does it? And it fucking blows your car to bits. And that's what you're paying for. You're paying for the expertise and the fact that if something goes wrong, you've got a comeback. And you can, like I say, anyone can do electrics, but knowing what you're doing and knowing what the fuck you're doing is two different, complete things in it. So. Don't compete with thirty pound people fitting ring doorbells. Also, you'll always be. I'm not doing skin- it. No, no way. I wouldn't even. I wouldn't even. I wouldn't even entertain it for that. My minimum call out is fifty pounds. That's it. You know, if you did ten of them a day, and you know, you drilled out of a socket, the back of a socket, and put the light on a bit of flex. Yeah. You'd still spend fucking fifteen quid in flex, wouldn't you? Raw plugs and nuts, bolts, and drills and stuff. I, I, I just, I just couldn't. Be out there I, for I can't. A I couldn't bring myself to do it for 30 quid. I'd rather do it for free than do it for 30 quid. Yeah, you'd rather swap it for something like, yeah. Because then you've got, like, if anything goes wrong with that for 30 quid, you've got to go back. And it's and it's just dead money. I just, no, I just can't do it. It's just dead money. It's just regional as well, until like I say, like, north, of the, north and south extremities, people pay less. And I don't know why that is. I, I, it, it, it amazes me we haven't got national rates of wages and, yeah no but all that don't work i don't want i don't want my rate mandated by someone like my rate no, my no that's rate... the other thing to it well jb have having london rates don't they but that's because if you work in london the jb spot you're gonna be yeah, paying those that, more but that's also the jb rate and stuff it doesn't really like when when you're uh, talking like i'm some fucking businessman now but <laughs> business i don't want we'll use my anyone code. telling me oh well this is what you this is the going rate don't care what the going rate yeah, is. Fuck the this, going is rate. What, this is I what mean, I'm working for. Back in the day, mentioned that JB rate. I remember, and this is this is old money, so sorry if it's sorry if you for young kids out there yeah, don't watch this, but I remember the JB rate in London made you about twelve pounds a day more. You know, we lodge and everything, yeah. You got twelve quid a day more. Yeah. And at that time a can of coke was about forty five P, but in London it was a quid. So like it yeah. didn't work then. And making no. rates higher and it certainly don't work now. Like I think the JB lodging rate's still like 35 quid in it yeah you know a... i'm so happy i'm so happy to be a, to like know that that's not my future anymore all this jib rate that and we should be getting this well, like, as, food a, and as lodging, like, it's lodging, so like it's a load of old gash 
Logical, I've some firm I speak to some of the vendors like, oh, yeah, you get £15 a day for food. Like, what the fuck you eat for £15 a day? Even if you go to right. Aldi and buy bread and butter and jam and sandwiches and stuff and pack yourself up for breakfast and sandwiches, you still can't go in the boozer, can you? And a bit of scrum at night because even Weatherspoon's going to charge you, I don't know, 12 30 good for a main meal and you're getting £12 a day. I'd be like, fuck off. To be honest with you, all that sort of stuff, if you're, if you're ungrateful for the, if you're, if you're not happy, with the rate you're getting at PAYE, move, moan about it and say, "Well, I deserve more." If you deserve more, go and get more, but don't ask a company to give you more. Do you know what I mean? Well, it's well, a bit no, weird. No, no, I, know. I, I disagree with that. What I would say is um, relate to my. This may or may not relate to what happened to me recently. Yeah, I decided to leave, and I said I'm leaving. And what one thing I do hate, yeah, and if you listen to this podcast and follow me, you do this. Fuck off, yeah. You know, if you want more money. Go and say to your boss, I think I'm worth more money for these reasons. And they'll make a decision on whether they can afford to pay more or will pay more, yeah? That's not option number one. The only way you've got to really vote is with your feet, yeah? But whatever you do, yeah? And I fucking hate these pricks, right? Do not go and get an interview for other jobs. Go to other job interviews. Get offered one to £5,000 more than where you are. Then go back to your existing employer and use it as leverage against them. Because you're a fucking terrorist. Yeah, I hate you people that do that. Don't do it. Because you're assholes. You're assholes. You're fucking other company around to leave your existing company because you're too weak to leave the job you've got. I hate it. I fucking hate it. And I would never be seen dead doing it. I think that's the dumbest logic that you've ever said. I don't give a fuck what you think. Yeah, I hate them. Go and all that effort. Yeah, but no one owes you nothing. No one owes you nothing out of it. Yeah, but you it's always like... not to be... Te- just go on out. If you think you're worth more, if you're Billy Big Ball Sparky and ask your firm for work more, say no. Go and take the other job that offered you more money and spread your wings. Don't use it as leverage against them because you're a fucking dick. That's a hard I... negotiation. It's not negotiation. Whoever's got the more leverage wins. Yeah, but negotiation is going to say, no, I think you need more money because I do this and you go, well, okay, I, you are a pretty good spark, actually. We can give you two quid an hour. But if, if the other firm down the road interview you, like you, offer you a job, offer you a contract, and then you don't fuck off down the road, use them to get more out of your employer, you're a terrorist. I no, bro, that's business. That's don't, business. No one business. owes you nothing. No one well, owes no. you nothing. You go, or if you go in there and say, I want more money, and they go, no, and you go and get another job, and they go, oh, give you more now, tell them to fuck off, because they're terrorising you, aren't they? It works both ways, but I just can't stand that this kind of shit. I'm so glad to be out of it. Like, if I have to go back and do, like, a couple of weeks subbing now... That's fine. Daniel Dizzle did it. Daniel Dizzle, you bastard. Get off the podcast. You're banned. You're bored. <laughs> You're the first person to be bored off this podcast. No, so I don't out. mind, man. I don't mind all that. Like, I'm just glad I'm out of it. If I go back and do a little bit of subbing now and again, I'll be happy to do that as well. I won't never, ever run a job for another subbing firm ever again. I'll just turn up, do my bit, get paid, go home. And I hope I never have to go back to it. Daniel's playing again. He says, "Mate, you, I think you're wrong. Make sure you have a hand to play." Yeah, that's what I said. If you got, if you're a good spark and you ask for more and you deserve it and you, you're being realistic, and you're better than the other spark because you're taking all the weight, you should get a pay rise. But if they don't offer you one, all you've got to do is vote for your feet. Don't use another firm against them. I just think it's wankery. And once the firm keep you for more money, they know how to twist you, and you'll never get out the door. You'll just get a carriage clock for working with twenty five years. Azuri Electrical, um, old uh, Libby. He says, I feel awful now. I charge 150 quid to fit a ring door camera. Do you know what? I don't like, I don't think this is one thing I've been really toying with. Do I charge more for my first hour? Should I really be charging like 100 pounds for the first hour? It's regional, isn't it? Again, I I just charge 50 pounds an hour, no matter what. That's my flat fee. If I got called out at like ten o'clock at night, I'd probably be like, "Listen, there's a hundred. Yeah, pound yeah, that's a piece out. take. Um, who's put there? I've just, I've just fucking clicked on block. I don't want to do that. Um, uh, Brett's put. You could retrain as a software engineer, and get five hundred fifty pounds a day. Software engineers very soft to Brett, but I will tell you now, in the one, in the year and a bit I did training, the amount of IT people that came to retrain the Sparkies was unbelievable. Unbelievable. And they all thought. They were going to make the fortune fit in EVs, the dicks. <laughs> like, or kind of, smart home tech. They're all there going, oh, I'm going to make, I'm going to do loads of EVs and that because I've got the software. Like, it's just a fucking app, mate, even though none of it work. But yeah, the amount of software IT people who came through retraining. Yeah. And they want to do bit, smart homes and stuff like that. And I'm not There's being no rude, call for that. I always thought they'd probably be a wanker IT because 
the good people I know who do good IT make good money. So maybe they were, maybe no, they were. Do you know what? I th- I think there's a, like it's almost a little bit. If you sit in an office, right? I did it for years when I was younger. Sit in an office, and I used to look at like van drivers and be like, I think I'd rather drive a van than sit in an office. Do you know what I mean? And you start seeing yeah, like you start I, I romanticizing guess, the other side of it. People who ro- yeah, romanticize. I'm not, I'm not really rude now, but they watch like the big Instagrammers, your Nick Bundys, your Artisans, your David Savory. No, not David Savory. But they watch them and they get that romance. But what they don't realize is even the big Instagrammers, even the big social media people, that's a snapshot of their day. I don't think Nick's ever put a put a video out of him waiting in a whole stage to be served while he drinks a clicks coffee because it's boring. But that is the reality of sparking. But I know a lot of people who came from training watched the big sparks and went, I want to do that. And I was like, that's not what it's really like. That's all the good bits. No, man. like, it's not what it's really like. And, and I think some people retrain to be something because they're not, say, a software engineer or an IT person, they're only giving 50% of the way they work. They're not. They're only doing 50% of the work and they think sparking is the be all end all of it. Same with plumbing. I bet, I bet plumbers' podcast has got the same shit on there. They go, someone's trained because they know they're going to get a grand for every ball they fit. And the reality is, it's not like that. No. And that's every trade. They, they're just jumping out the frying pan to fire with the same problems, I'd imagine. Apart from the fact that they, uh, they know how to work the fucking IT, which we don't. So Paul Cook has got a back box for a pair clip. And I'm just going to have to give the other ones away on Instagram, I think. But I'm going to have to actually think of something to give them away. I'm so bad today. You know what? I'm burning out from good. just you know, you working know got, too much. I, I gave out the number and looked at the phone. We're, first text that. we're so... We come up with all these great ideas. It's just that we never follow through because we TV know. Markets, but... So, Paul Cook, get in touch. You've got a back box repair kit set coming out to you. So, you've got to get in touch. DM me, message me, whatever. No one's message the, got... the phone. I have this phone for no reason. Um, but if you want to message it, top of the chat is the phone. We'll take things on there for next week. Anything like that. You've got 48 guess... hours to, to message me if you want it. I think Bye. we've got a guest next week as well. We're going to be putting out something about that. Uh, I'll, I'll give away this. We're doing a special on reminiscing about the good old days. And we'd love to hear your stories about things you like to reminisce about. I think what what oh, what started this off was me and some of the conversations of the night about dot matrix printers. You'll recognize because every old social has them and what retro they are. So what other retro things in the trade do you fully remember? Let us know for an upcoming um future podcast with a with an Instagram big player, I'll call them. Riveting. You're an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> right. And that one, Electrician's Listen, well, Podcast. Why, why do you keep going out in 15 minutes? We're out. You used to be bang on, now you wank. Are we finished?